Astro just announced the three big features they're working on in 2024. And that's what I wanna walk through in this video. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, a bit of a different video than I typically do, but I thought I would walk you through kind of my first impressions of these three features that Astro just announced. Now here's this tweet and you can see there's three features as you can see right here. Let's stop this animation if I can. The first one here is view transition support and natively in browser. So zero client side JavaScript. We'll talk about that in a second. Secondly, content collections 2.0. So taking the existing content collections and just expanding upon it, making it a lot more diverse and interesting. And I think appealing to people who already have content in another system. And then finally, what I think is probably the best feature, server islands. All right, so first of all, if you're interested in watching a video of all this, the founder, Fred here, put a video together at this recent in-person event they did. I'd encourage you to check that out, or you can check out the entire event right here, which is definitely worth a watch as well. Okay, so let's talk about this first one, zero JavaScript view transitions. Now, if you're not familiar, the way Astro currently works is they kind of inject a client-side router. And so there's JavaScript being in injected to mimic this, all right, to actually do all this client side. Now that's kind of against a lot of the first principles of Astro, but they did this in the future hopes that the spec for view transitions in browsers would come to fruition and they built it with that in mind. So really it's a browser feature that Astro just did a lot of work ahead of time to make sure that they would be compatible for, have a fallback right now, you can then take out. And that's really what this is announcing. So Chromium uh, has just shipped this. So Chroma shipped it. It's coming to edge soon if it's not already there by the time this video posts. And there's, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff that you've seen before where you're actually switching routes, but it looks like a, a native app. Well, what you can do now is remove the view transitions uh, component that they give you and replace it with just this little line of CSS. So as you can see, if I come down here, this is all you have to use. You no longer have to use the view transitions component and everything else will work the exact same. So it's a very easy switch over. And that was kind of the intention that they set this up with this future improvement in browsers in mind. So if you want to up grade an existing project. Again, you just remove this section with the view transitions component and add this basic style declaration. Browsers that support it will transition for you. Browsers, browsers that don't, they'll just, you know, transition like normal, like a normal MPA. All right. Well, as you can see, there's a couple other details here, like how transition persists work and a couple other things like that. But I'm, I'm really excited about the future of the web. And this is one of the things that I think Astro gets really correct. They've thought ahead about how the web should work and then they're trying to put their weight behind things like view transitions to say, this is what we want it to look like. And then building with that kind of optimism in mind. All right. So second is the content collections 2.0. Now, if you've used content collections in the past, I think they're kind of Astro's superpower. You get type safe, like local files, whether that data files or content files, and you can validate all the schema in the front matter and then render it out on the client and it knows everything that exists so that as you're building out a blog or a site that has different data markers, it's very easy to know whether or not your data fits your schema. Well, what Astro has done though, is they've kind of created a system where you have to think the way they do, structure it the way they do. Now with 2.0, their plan is to open this up to where you can just pass it your data from wherever it exists, whether it's in the content folder or even remote data from like a database, or if you have some other existing files, you could just pass it to it. It will still validate it, but you don't have to follow their strict, like rigid structure. So as you come down here, you'll notice this is how it would typically work, where you just get the different content, whether it's blog posts or blog entries, and you can do this kind of from local files. That's why things like Keystatic or Cloud Cannon or a lot of these local first uh, markup CMSs I prefer because I'm already using content collections and it just taps right into that. However, what if you're using something else that has its, you know, content somewhere else like Sanity and it's, what is it called? The content lake, I think. Uh, however you set up that or whether it's in a database or something else like that, you may not want to rewrite all that just to use Astro. Well, with 2.0, I think this will open up Astro to a lot of other devs. You can see that now you can just simply pass it your data and say, hey, it's from the database here. And then it will validate all of that and you'll still be able to get the power of content collections without having to do like the exact structure that they have in place. So anyhow, I really like this idea. It doesn't mean you can't use it as it currently exists. It just opens up new possibilities. And I like to see where this might go. So you can see how you can like load content from an external CMS or load it from an API, or you can just hard code an array in line and it will be just fine. You don't have to have a separate file structure and all that kind of stuff. So this would be really helpful for like tags and things where you don't want to have individual files for all this. It sounds like you could just have an inline file and read from it directly there. I could be wrong there. That's my understanding. So anyhow, I think there's just really, really interesting possibilities for this. 
And again, I think it will expose content collections to people who aren't currently using it because they won't have to rewrite their entire app just to use this, this powerful feature. All right, so this is, again, this is a, this one and the next one are both in stage one. So lots might change. So I'll wait till I hear more before I do anything on it. But I'm really excited about this idea. I think, again, it will open this up to more. Finally, the thing I'm most excited about is this is the server islands idea. And really what we've always had in Astro is static sites where you can occasionally have client-side JavaScript that you opt into. So if you're using something like React or Vue or Svelte and you have a little component, you can use a client directive like client only or client visible, my personal favorite, where when it gets visible on the screen, it then hydrates that component with JavaScript. So Astro takes care of the HTML and then the framework, once that JavaScript loads, takes care of all the dynamicness. However, you're still loading a bunch of client-side JavaScript. And in Astro, and in my mind, that's kind of something you should only do if you absolutely have to. Well, what if you could render all those dynamic components on the server and simply stream in the response? That means the entire site is static, and even once you get that dynamicness from the server, there's nothing client-side rendered. It's just a single script that grabs that and drops it in. Well, that's what you've got with these server islands. And again, this is in stage one, so I'm sure a lot will change here as well but it gives you all the performance and dynamicness of using a client-side JavaScript, but it's all done on the server. So unlike client-side hydration, here with server-side hydration, you're having a little section that's then hydrated by the server. So instead of using a client directive, you're using a server director, like server colon defer. And then right here, you can see that they've actually streamed in the response from the server, but there's no additional JavaScript being loaded on the page. So I think this is the most exciting and has the most possibility for keeping a website really fast and content focused, but also giving you the dynamicness of something like an avatar that's loading in. I'm interested in the fallback behavior here. It looks like they have some kind of fallback behavior where you get like this basic icon and then it loads in afterwards. So I'm interested in how that works, especially with like content layout shift and things like that. But I trust Astro to make really smart decisions here. There's a, a dynamic kind of graph here showing what this looks like. Everything else is static HTML. And then instead of these being client-side islands, they're server-side islands. And again, I'm really excited about the performance and personalization of this. And that's actually what they call it right here. So anyhow, those are my thoughts on the future of Astro and the three things that they announced. If you have your own thoughts, leave them in the comments below. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.